the global community by surprise with this unparalleled and unprecedented death toll. With this global pandemic still surging across our nation and other nations around the world, creating fears and uncertainties concerning the future, we take comfort and solace in the fight that our anchor holds and grips the solid rock of all ages, our Creator and Heavenly Father, who has remained our help in ages past and our hope for years to come. With God being the ultimate source of our dependence, we are of the strongest conviction that eventually, we as a nation and a people will turn the page on this pandemic and become permanently raped and delivered from all its consequences and atrocities. I believe the time is coming when we'll look back retrospectively and figure out how such a disease emerged and spread its devastation so quickly across the globe and how all those involved reacted to the crisis. The lessons learned would be very important and essential to effectively address similar challenges that may arise in the future. Taking into consideration the theme for this year's celebration, together we are stronger, fighting COVID-19 and achieving development, peace, human rights, justice, health, and prosperity for all. I believe the need for unity amongst all Liberians cannot be sufficiently emphasized. This is time for the entire citizenry of this nation to work together in solidarity, not only to stop this virus and its shattering consequences, but also to be our brother's keeper and love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Consequently, if one of us is in trouble, all of us are compassionate enough to show concern and see that one being delivered from his or her trouble. When one of our brothers or sisters is lifted or promoted, we all celebrate their lifting. Our country needs each of us during these difficult times to unite and stand together as a demonstrable evidence of our love for our common patrimony. And the best way I believe to unite and revitalize our nation both economically and socially is by doing so for a cause that is greater than ourselves. Beginning with those of us who occupy leadership position and for those of us who are aspiring for leadership position, let it be known, first of all, that being a leader places a tremendous responsibility upon our shoulders. We are pay setters, we are trailblazers and influencers of public opinion. John Maxwell said, and I quote, he who thinks he leads and has no one following is only taking a walk. Simply put, the choices we make and the actions we take in the public space that we occupy as leaders will inevitably determine the choices and actions of those who are following our lead. Your ascendancy to leadership position is not an opportunity to fulfill a selfish agenda prompted by a desire for personal aggrandizement. It is rather a privilege given you by the Almighty to build legacy by contributing meaningfully to the larger society and leaving behind indelible footprints in the sand of time that will serve as a compass and guiding light to help chart the course of excellence for generations yet unborn. The late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, and I quote, an individual has not started living until he can rise above the narrow confines of his individualistic concerns to the broader concerns of all humanity, unquote. When we learn and begin to practice how to become other-centered, 
rather than being self-centered. We will be demonstrating those sacred words recorded and enshrined in our national anthem, which says we are one nation, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Let me challenge each of us Liberians on this occasion as we celebrate this important milestone to redefine our role in consolidating the progress towards national reconciliation and national development by putting the interests of our nation above personal interests. Accordingly, there are a few questions that we need to ask ourselves from time to time, like, what can we do or say that we help in enhancing the process of achieving national unity and reconciliation? What are some of the things that we ought to avoid as we look forward to living in peace as one nation and one people? What are some of the lessons we have learned from our past political upheavals and national crises that will now guide us as we move forward in achieving our national development goals? What are some of the ways by which we can be selective in altering our words and our speeches so as not to become divisive, but rather people who are peacemakers and people who are unity seekers for a nation that has been divided for so long. As a church and a people, people of faith, let us remain resolute in our unflinching commitment to ceaselessly uphold our president and all other national leaders in our prayers as we are admonished to always do in the scriptures. By so doing, we believe that God who ordained leadership and works through leadership to fulfill his divine agenda in every nation will supernaturally intervene in our affairs and keep us on the pathway of peace unity, solidarity, and patriotism. Patriotism, I believe, is one of the integral parts of the solution to today's crisis. And that is why each of us who claim to love this country is under obligation to ensure that we make all of the sacrifices required in raising the bar of excellence that we catapult Liberia to that place where our relevance and significance within the comedy of nation, we stand out again like never before. As far as history can authenticate, we as Africa's oldest independent and democratic republic have assumed several major roles and responsibilities in not only unifying Africa, but the world at large, as indicated in our involvement in information of the United Nations, the Organization of African Unity, now African Union, our, our sub-regional amalgamation, ECOWAS, etc. Fellow Liberians, as we observe 174 years of existence as an independent African nation, let me admonish all of us to remember the rock from which we were healed. Every nation has an ancient landmark that makes her unique and distinct. The Bible was enshrined within our national life from the very foundation of this nation. When we gained our independence in 1847. We had two major books, the Bible and the Constitution. Liberia made the Constitution but the Bible made Liberia. Let us never make the mistake of reaching the peak of pride and arrogance where in the name of political correctness will attempt to take God out of the equation of our national existence. It is only God who can turn our obstacles into miracles. It is only God who can turn the ridiculous into the miraculous. 
It is only God who can change our breakdowns and turn them around into our breakthrough. It is only God who can take an inferior from the interior and make him superior. It is only God who can raise up the poor out of the dust and lift up the beggar out of the dumb pot and set him among princes to inherit thrones of glory. It is only God who can take a dehumanized slave who was only considered as a thing to be used, not a person to be respected, and raise him up and set him up upon a pedestal to become object of attraction in society. You can never go wrong when God and the Bible becomes your compass and guide in life. John Quincy Adam, an eminent American statesman, diplomat, and lawyer, who served as the sixth president of the United States of America said, and I quote, so great is my veneration of the Bible that the earlier my children begin to read it, the more confident would be my hope that they will prove useful citizens of their country and respectable members of society. I have made it a practice to read through the Bible once every year, unquote. Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States of America said, and I quote, I believe the Bible is the best gift God has given to mankind. For all the good from the Savior of the world is communicated to us through that book. Queen Victoria of England once said, pointing to the Bible, that book accounts for the supremacy of England, unquote. Daniel Webster, the American politician and notary orator said, and I quote, if there's anything in my thought or style to command, the credit is due to my parents for instilling in me an early love for the scripture. If we abide by the principles taught in the Bible, our nation will go on prospering and to prosper. But if we and our posterity neglect his instructions and authority, no man can tell how sudden a catastrophe may overwhelm us and bury all our glory in profound obscurity. Unquote. George Washington, who was an American political leader, military general, statesman, and founding father of the United States, who served as the first president of the United States said, and I quote, it is impossible to rightly govern the world without God in the Bible. W.E. Gladstone, a British statesman and liberal political leader who served for 12 years as prime minister of the United Kingdom said, and I quote, I have known 95 of the world's greatest men in my time. And of these, it is seven the followers of the Bible, unquote. Proverbs 22 and verse 28 says, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Beloved, while we strongly advocate the inalienable rights of all Liberians to life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness, while the desire for a peaceful coexistence of all Liberians, irrespective of our individual religious persuasion, remains our earnest prayer and utmost desire. Let us remember not to remove the Asian landmark to prevent ourselves and our posterity from suffering the untold consequences associated with a nation and the people who forget their God. Scripture says, blessed is that nation whose God is the Lord. As I bring this brief thanksgiving message to a close, let me challenge each of us Liberians to count our many blessings and name them one by one. 
And when we do, according to the wordings of thy hymn writer, it will surprise us what the Lord has done. Let us be thankful today for the good things that we have, because the good things that we have are for many others just a dream. We have gone through a very terrible and tedious time in this nation since this disease broke out. I know many of us have loved, we have lost some loved ones, but yet when we think about how God protected and covered us as a nation, the devastation that would have hated this nation would have been so terrible and the consequences would have been so dire. But today, we can look around and see that the Lord has been good to us. We will forever remain grateful to make our joyful noise unto the Lord and serve him with gladness and thank him for his goodness and for his wonderful blessings towards the children of men. In the words of the psalmist, he has broken the gates of brides and he has caught the bars of iron in sunder. Fellow Liberians, best of what we can do for our nation in these changing times is love Liberia. Think the best for Liberia and contribute meaningfully to the success and prosperity of Liberia. May God bless Liberia and may he save the state. Thank you for listening. We'll call upon Emmeline Rebecca Finley of the Alpha International School Fairman Singer for the reading of the Independence Day Proclamation. Emmeline is eight years old and she's a third grader of this school. A proclamation by the president, whereas in his infinite goodness and mercy, God has blessed and flourished the work of the minds, hearts, and hands of all the people of the Republic of Liberia from July 26, 1847, when this nation was declared a free, sovereign, and independent state, and from thence through the years of our national life, many faults and favorites have been the experiences of the nation and its people who through it all have been able to forge their way by dint of perse perseverance, devotion and courage and whereas after due deliberations on the future of the settlements and facing colonial challenges and threats, the founding fathers did publish to the world that historic and immortal instrument known as the Declaration of Independence, by which the Commonwealth of Liberia became and was presented to the Committee of Nations as a free, sovereign, and independent state, thereby warding off accouchement from any colonial power and becoming the first independent African Republic. And whereas it is our right and binding duty in grateful recognition of the blessings and miraculous deliverance, which his almighty hand has extended to us as a nation and state, although we have been most unworthy of them, to give thanks, adoration, and praise unto him for saving the state, and to commemorate the brave and timely decision of our forebears 
on 26 July 1847 and whereas under the Patriotic and Cultural Observances Law, Title 26, Liberian Court of Laws of 1956. The 26th day of July each year is set aside as a public holiday to be known as Independence Day and appropriately celebrated and whereas the term for the 2021 Independence Day is together. We are stronger, fighting COVID-19 and achieving development, peace, human rights, justice, health, and prosperity for all. And whereas due to the COVID-19 situation, the usual official festive celebration of the day will not be held. Now, therefore, I, Dr. Josh Nana, we are president of the Republic of Liberia. By virtue of the authority in me, the laws of the man do hereby declare and proclaim Monday, July 26, 2021, as Independence Day to be observed throughout the Republic of Liberia as a national holiday and do call upon all citizens of the Republic and all foreign governments residents within our borders to observe the scene as such and require that all governments, offices, and business houses be closed on this day from 6 o'clock anti-meridian to 6 o'clock post-meridian. Furthermore, I do call upon, instruct, invite, and request all citizens in solemn cooperation with all prelates, priests, deacons, evangelists, imams, elders, and other members of the Cicedida order, regardless of religious creed, to observe health protocols in their respective places of worship offering thanks and praises to God for his blessings showered upon the Republic in past and present times and beseech him for his continuing goodness and beneficence towards all peoples and nations of the earth, especially the people of the Republic of Liberia, given under my hand and seal of the Republic of Liberia in the city of Monrovia, county of Monserrado, this 21st day of July in the year of our Lord 2021 and of the independence of the Republic, the 174th. Dr. Josh Mano, we are president of the Republic of Liberia. By order of the president, Ambassador D. Maxwell Sakimayatinian, Minister of Foreign Affairs. We have the introduction of the National Orator by Janetta C. Siafa of the Heritage International Leadership Academy. She's 11 years old and a sixth grader. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the national orator of this year, Independence Day celebrations. The orator, a professor of moral philosophy and ethics, holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Zoology from the Thomas J.R. Faulkner College of Science and Technology, University of Liberia, 1983, Master of Divinity degree with Theology major and Ecumenics minor. 
Yemen Theological Seminary, they entered the Nominational Theological Center, 1987, Atlanta, Georgia, USA, Master of Arts degree in Youth Ministry, Columbia, Theological Seminary, 1988, Decatur, Georgia, USA, and Doctor of Ministry with focus on peacemaking and Muslim-Christian dialogue learning from the examples of the Inter-Religious Council of Liberia. United Theological Seminary, 2004, Dayton, Ohio, USA. As a staunch clergyman, he served the United Methodist Church in Liberia as counseling elder. Refuge UMC Dean of the Banga School of Theology, College of Theology at the United Methodist University in Liberia. Director of the Department of Youth and Young Adult Ministries, Conference Secretary, Acting Director, Conference Council on Ministries, Associate Pastor of the Stephen Atroa Nangbe United Methodist Church. Currently, the orator serves as the chairperson of the Conference Council of Connectional Ministries member of the Conference Council on Finance and Administration, co-facilitator of the Strategic Planning Committee and vice chairperson and co-facilitator of the Strategic Planning Commission, Liberia Annual Conference, United Methodist Church. He is also the official representative of the Liberia Annual Conference, the African Initiative of the United Methodist Church AIUMC Network. The National Orator served the ecumenical movement. He is the current chairperson of the NSCC Senior Friends Network. He served the World Student Christian Federation, YSCF, the International Body of Student of Mediation Committee, IFMC. Now the Interreligious Council of Liberia IRCL. He also served as leader consultant of the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, in partnership with Federation of Liberia Youth, FLY, for the drafting slash formulation of the National Youth Policy Document in 2016. He is the current chairman of the Board of Directors of the Federation of Liberia Youth, FLY. Prior to his appointment as the 15th president of the University of Liberia, our orator was an associate professor of moral philosophy and ethics and chairperson of the Department of Philosophy and Religion, College of Social Sciences and Humanities, the Liberia College of the University of Liberia. He was the former vice president and dean of the student affairs at the University of Liberia from 2007 to 2018. He is married to Mother Dr. Maria Victoria Goodbridge. Nelson and the Union is blessed with seven biological children, plus many more adulted children and grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to present the National Orator of the 174th Independent Anniversary of the Republic of Liberia. Prof. Dr. Julia Jilikon Swaholo Nelson, Jr. His Excellency Dr. George Manewia, President of the Republic of Liberia, Madam Claire Marie Weir, First Lady, Republic of Liberia, Honorable Chief Dr. Joel Howard Taylor, Vice President, Republic of Liberia, Madam Ellen Johnson Salif, former president of the Republic of Liberia, Ambassador Joseph Boikai, former vice president, Republic of Liberia, honorable speaker, Dr. Boffers Chimbas, and members of the House of Representatives, honorable president pro tem Abbot Chia, and members of the Liberian Senate, his honor, Chief Justice Francis Boko, Associate Justices of the Supreme Court of Liberia, and members of the judiciary, former officials of government, the dean and members of the cabinet, excellencies, the doyen and members of the diplomatic and consular corps, 
the resident coordinator of the United Nations system and heads of international organization, the chief of staff and gallant men and women of the armed forces of Liberia and other members of the security apparatus, my spouse, Dr. Muriel Victoria Gurich Nelson, and members of the Julukon Sawula Nelson family, Chief Zanza Kawa, Chair of the National Traditional Council of Chiefs, Elders and Zoes, Prelates, members of the clergy, heads and members of religious institutions, heads of political parties and civil society organizations, heads of educational institutions and the University of Liberia family, president and chairpersons of youth and student organizations, president and chairpersons of women organizations, members of the business community, especially market women and men, Yana boys and girls, bus and taxi drivers, keke and pepin drivers, we barrel operators, disadvantaged and physically challenged citizens, members of the fourth estate, distinguished guests, fellow Liberians, ladies and gentlemen. Please join me in the moment of silence for those of our compatriots who have succumbed to death as a result of the pandemic COVID-19 and the recent sinking of the boat Nico Ivanka. May their souls rest in perfect peace. First and foremost, Mr. President, please accept our profound congratulations on the celebration of the 174th Independence Day of Liberia, your fourth observance as president of the nation. This celebration is indicative of how far our democracy has come. We must express our gratitude to God Almighty, the Supreme Being for grace, mercy, and the that has brought us safely to 174 years of independence as a nation. We, as a people, have vowed some 18 years ago, following the signing of the Accra Comprehensive Peace Accord in the Republic of Ghana, that we will not resort to war, destruction, or conflict as a means of resolving our disagreements and our differences. We must therefore congratulate and salute the Liberian people for proving to Africa and the world that we can live together in peace and that we will study war no more. Let us also extend our profoundest appreciation to you, Mr. President, and your government for the singular honor of selecting us as the Independence Day Orator on the occasion of the 174th Independence Day of the Republic of Liberia. Considering us a child of God, born in Sonuwen, Monserrado County, who grew up in Lagoon, Nuku Town, went to school in Bombing Hills, Lower Buchanan, and Morovia, and is now the 15th president of the Lux in Tenebris, the University of Liberia. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is great. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Mr. President. We appreciate you for the level of progress in our national development that your leadership has brought to our country and therefore urge you and your team to continue working hard. We wish to also express our sincere thanks and appreciation to the United Nations, the African Union, the Economic Community of West African States, the Mano River Union, as well as our bilateral and multilateral partners for their support to the government and people of Liberia. We look forward to more partnership engagements as we pursue our development drive. The Liberian reality as we envision the future. This is our perception of the Liberian reality as we together envision the future of our common patrimony. As our national item clearly points out, Liberia is a glorious land of liberty by God's command for all of its citizens, irrespective of our social and economic status and our political or religious affiliation. It is ours to enjoy, preserve, protect, 
develop and turn over to the next generation after us in an improved fashion. Liberia is a nation of great potential socially, culturally, and economically that requires a nationalistic, patriotic, and visionary mindset to recognize, appreciate, and pursue the common good of all of us. As such, it behooves us, all of us, to unite and continually recognize, appreciate, and embrace our ethnic, racial, tribal, religious, social, and political diversities. The Constitution of Liberia set the basis for our interactions as families, tribes, and citizens for the common good of the entire community and the Republic of Liberia. In a society as ours, families, tribes, and citizens are directed to have respect and appreciation for each other. This calls for tolerance, unity, peace, understanding, cooperation, dialogue, reconciliation, partnership, reconstruction, and sustainable development in the rich context of our diversity. In the process of holding these virtues, we have had our share of challenges. Liberia has always survived our crises and challenges. There have been crises which challenged our very existence as a nation and a people. In the past, some of the crises led to the annexation of our territory by powerful people. Some had to do with the denial of citizenship and voting rights, while others resulted into the acquisition of slave trade and as a consequence for the resignation of a president. Some had to do with the military coup d'etat and the bloody civil war. Our recent history has also not been devoid of crisis. One such recent crisis was the invisible enemy Ebola, which killed more than 10,000 within our region and borders. As we celebrate another Independence Day, our nation faces another invisible enemy, COVID-19, which is currently ravaging our economy and killing our people. But together, we as a nation and people must be determined to fight and defeat this invisible enemy by being conscious and intentional through our eyes of love for self and others and our love for nation building. We are convinced that we all will get there by the grace of God Almighty. Acknowledging our challenges and envisioning resolution for now and the future. Fellow Liberians, let us retrospect on our history for a moment and how we evolved into a nation state, pondering on some key mistakes we have made as a nation in the hope of finding solutions for now and the future. Many years ago, our brothers and sisters were so true the great transatlantic slave trade movement to become slaves on many plantations throughout the world. Many, many years later, they returned from the United States, the Caribbean, and other parts of the world in search of a home where freedom, peace, and prosperity will be embraced. They settled on Providence Island and later extended to other parts of the hinterland of Liberia. The indigenous people were already living here, welcomed them as brothers and sisters, but many times living together became a challenge. There were many internal scrimmages and sometimes serious conflicts which threatened the existence of the young nation. At other times, there were external threats from great war powers as well, and therefore the logical thing to do at the time was to come together as a nation. A peaceful environment where there will be freedom, liberty, and prosperity for all, including the rest of Africa.
fellow Liberians, Liberia is one of the oldest nations on the continent of Africa. This firstborn child had a disproportionate responsibility to lead the rest of Africa to liberty from north to south, from east to west. In the 1950s and early 1960s, Liberia politically fought for and spearheaded the independence of most African nations that celebrate their sovereignty today. Our forefathers and foremothers, both American Liberians and indigenous, envisioned Liberia as a nation where all of its people will live in harmony, love, peace, and prosperity, but sadly, my fellow compatriots, there have been times when we have painfully experienced oppression, marginalization, exploitation, and corruption at a resulted into conflicts, sometimes war, and loss of lives, and the destruction of properties infrastructure and the very fabric of our society. Our nation and people have other times fallen victim to some natural disaster, such as landslide, flood, sea erosion, as well as other epidemics, epidemics such as the Ebola virus disease and the current COVID-19 virus. COVID-19 alone has claimed more than 4 million lives globally including some of our citizens. The current COVID-19 pandemic, which is challenging the social economic well-being of Mama Liberia, is yet another evidence that we have now always been faithful stewards of this gift, Liberia, the glorious land of liberty by God's command. And we have not always sustained the vision that birthed our nation, but, my fellow compatriots, it is not late. We still have the opportunity to end the blame game, renew our minds, reconcile our differences, focus on what unites us, roll up our sleeves, and build a new Liberia. Pride divides the community and society. Unity and peace brings the community and society together. The issue of unity is not just theoretical. It is practical. We should not only talk unity, we should practice unity concretely. We can demonstrate unity by the attitudes of gentleness, humility, and patience. The psalmist says, quote, how good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters live together in unity or harmony, unquote. Let us walk in and work for unity. Let us allow unity to be the foundation or cornerstone to achieving development in the Republic of Liberia. We, who are heirs of this sweet land of liberty, must ensure that the love of liberty must remain our national commitment until the vestiges of oppression and exploitation are no more. We should not relent until African sons and daughters rise to a nobler destiny. It is against this backdrop, my fellow compatriots, that we will speak to you on the national team. Together, we are stronger fighting COVID-19 and achieving development, peace, human rights, justice, health, and prosperity for all. Fighting COVID-19. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Liberia with the experience of the Ebola virus crisis in 2014 witnessed and acknowledged the true picture of our already challenged healthcare system, which came on a severe attack. But with the national commitment and determination, we were able to face up to this menace and defeat it completely. As COVID-19 infections began to be reported, around the world in January of 2020, many countries responded by shutting down schools, workplaces, international borders in order to curtail the spread of the virus. 
We had our own share of temporary lockdown and fought back the disease until recently when we are being hit again with a new wave that is reported to be even deadlier than the first. In spite of this reality, it is worth noting that according to our national health statistics, our infection rate is decreasing with a maximum average of 42 new infections reported each day. That is 23% of the peak, which was the highest daily average reported since 8 July 2021. We can confidently declare here today, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that just as we together defeated Ebola virus disease, we can and we will certainly defeat COVID-19. Together, we will fight on until the invisible enemy, COVID-19, is defeated and eradicated from within our national borders. That means we must all governize our efforts, drop the continuous blame game, pull together our resources as a nation and people, and get each and every hand on deck and fight this deadly virus together. In order to fight together, we need to adhere strictly to all the health protocols. In order to fight it together, we need to wear our mask at all times when in the public domain. In order to fight it together, we need to wash our hands as often as we can. In order to fight it together, we need to observe social distancing wherever and whenever necessary. In order to fight this deadly disease together, we need to stop the conspiracy theorists and get vaccinated as soon as possible. In order to fight it together, the government needs to disperse the needed funds allotted for the fight to the right places on the right medical weaponry to eradicate this disease. In order to fight it together, we need to exhibit a high level of accountability for all the resources entrusted to our care. It is no secret that the very fabric of our society is plagued with systemic challenges of corruption and other negative practices that have entrenched our nation. These vices have the propensity to impede our progress towards our fight against this virus and other social and economic challenges. In lieu of this reality, we must be reminded, fellow compatriots, that only Liberians can develop Liberia. Our gracious partners will continue to support our effort in this direction, but it takes us to lead and sustain the process of national development and patriotism. We must therefore master the courage and rally our nationalistic spirit to stand up to these vices together. The record shows that the entire planet is battling this pandemic with some going into total lockdown, some into partial lockdowns, others focusing on obtaining herd immunity through the vaccine and many other approaches. But one thing is certain, all of these countries are approaching their fight with a united effort. Liberia being no exception requires more than just a united effort. Our actions must be propelled by love for our country first before our individual, social, economic, cultural, religious, or political interests. It is often said that the darkest hour is just before dawn. If that is true, then there is always light at the end of the tunnel. But to reach the end of the tunnel, we must work towards it. We must not become complacent with the fact that our situation is improving, but rather continue to rally our efforts, whether we find ourselves in government, the private sector, civil society, religious institution, etc. We have to work and continue a unified approach in standing up to this situation and not getting weary until the fight is over and the victory is ours. Achieving development. Honorable ladies and gentlemen, after 174 years of independence, 
Liberia is a core, a developing nation. This is nothing to be proud of, especially when some of the countries we supported to gain their independence are far ahead on the ladder of human capital and infrastructural development. It is unfortunate that in many respects, we are the cause of our own lack of growth, and we need to own up to our responsibilities and duties as a nation and correct our errors in order to move our nation forward. We are a low-income country that relies on donor assistance and remittances from the diaspora. On the contrary, we are, however, richly endowed with water, mineral resources, forests, and a climate that is favorable to agriculture. In addition to our principal export of iron ore, rubber, timber, diamonds, and gold, we are always engaging and encouraging oil exploration while oil, palm, and cocoa are entering the marketplace. All of this is very promising in addition to our domestic resource mobilization, which put us in a better position to achieve development at a greater pace in the Republic of Liberia. We hasten to stress here today that though the responsibility lies primarily with the government to create an enabling environment that will foster economic growth, social services, such as the building of schools, hospital, and other infrastructure development, we, however, will not hesitate to act as proud citizens of this great land of liberty. We have equal and important roles to play as well. While the government focuses on the bigger picture, critical national development priorities, we, as citizens, need to focus on the smaller picture by engineering a nationalistic mind and demonstrating love for country at all times. We, as citizens, must never engage in actions that will be counterproductive in our national development aspiration. We must continually do our part whenever we find ourselves to support and contribute to national development in whatever little way we can. It is counterproductive to development when we walk along the road and throw garbage in the streets and drainages, while at the same time we sing praises of other nations whose citizens are careful to use the garbage bin, thereby keeping their cities clean. It is counterproductive to development when we loot the electric wires and solar panels install on the street lights to provide light at night but admire other countries that are lit up at night. It is counterproductive to development when we take without asking for the cross rocks that were brought to repair the cracks in the road and in some places construct roads while at the same time commending other countries for having good roads. It is counterproductive to development when we exploit our children who are pursuing their education while speaking well about the educational standards in other countries. It is counterproductive to development when we are in a position of trust and we betray that trust. It is counterproductive to development when some of us begin to think that we are more Liberian than others. Indeed, it is counterproductive to development when we don't care and we do not care for the need and welfare of others. We are being practical here today because it is good to turn down from the high academic pedestal and speak directly into the hearts and minds of our Irish Liberian. Mr. President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, permit me to remind all Liberians once again that the growth and development of our beloved country can only be possible if we continue to hold together, work together, share together, and support each other. For this to be possible, we have to be reminded about the golden rule that states, quote, do unto others as you have them do unto you, unquote. 
In other words, treat others as you want to be treated if you were in their place and position. This cannot be done through demonstrating hate and dislike for each other, whether we are in government or out of government. Peace, human rights, and justice. Now about peace, human rights, and justice in the context of our nation. In 2015, world leaders adopted a new development framework, Agenda 2030, which recognized the need to build peaceful, just, and inclusive societies that provide equal access to justice that are based on respect for human rights, including the right to development, on effective rule of law, and good governance at all levels, and on transparent, effective, and accountable institutions. Our nation, as a member state of the United Nations, agree that this agenda cannot be realized without peace and security. And peace and security will be at risk without sustainable development. Locally, in domesticating these global agreed actions, we consulted in 2018, bringing together all stakeholders with support from our development partners and agreed on a national development agenda, the proper agenda for prosperity and development, PAPD, which is enshrined in our four pillars. These pillars are one, power to the people to reduce the developmental inequalities so the power people can prosper. Two, the economy and jobs, economic stability and job creation through effective resource mobilization and prudent management of economic inclusion. Three, sustaining the peace, promoting a cohesive society for sustainable development. And four, governance and transparency, an inclusive and accountable public sector for shared prosperity and sustainable development. The goal of PLO3 under the National Development Agenda is called ensuring a more peaceful, unified society that enables economic transformation and sustainable development, unquote. We collectively agree to end fragility and the root causes of conflict by implementing the Liberia Peace Building Plan and Strategy Roadmap for Healing, Peace Building, and Reconciliation to Improve Social Cohesion and Reconciliation. As a means of sustaining the peace, we also agreed to incorporate peace building and reconciliation as part of our national curriculum. Let us use this occasion of our 174th Independence Day anniversary to remind all Liberians, including our development partners, that under the same period three of our national development agenda, we agreed to ensure access to justice, root of law, and human rights. Fellow citizens, domestic violence, rape, and the abuse of women and girls is a serious problem in our society. It must be clear that women's rights are human rights. Our women and girls need justice in the many reported rape cases across the country. On September 11, 2020, the government of Liberia declared rape a national emergency. Let us match this declaration with action that will be bringing the perpetrators of rape cases to justice. In consideration of our 174th Independence Day team, together we are stronger fighting COVID-19 and achieving development, peace, human rights, justice, health, and prosperity for all. Let us ask each and every one, particularly our three branches of government, to soberly reflect upon the implementation of this third pillar. Why the implementation of all four pillars is indispensable to the achievement of our national agenda for the purpose of this address, we invite you to reflect on your role in the implementation of the third pillar. This reflection is bordered on hard searching inquiry. That is, during these three and a half years into the implementation of this national development agenda, 
how have your institution or office contributed to the attainment of these agreed actions are enshrined in this national development agenda? How many of us as Liberians have taken ownership of this document as our national development plan so that in later ways we might contribute to its implementation in our homes, institutions, communities, districts, counties, etc. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, as we celebrate our 174th National Independence Day today, we wish to call on each and every Liberian to cultivate the culture of peace and working together through our national development agenda. Let every stakeholder begin to see and own this agenda as a national platform for achieving our development aspiration. We call upon government public relations institutions and our district and county officials to ensure that the ordinary people understand what the government's proposed agenda for prosperity and development is and their vision sustaining each of our four pillars. Let them be written and translated in our various languages and vernaculars so that our people know them, understand them, and own them. Health. Health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease and infirmities. It is a destination that will reach to help us become productive in life. Without an adequate healthcare delivery system, we cannot survive as a nation. For example, in 2014, the Delhi Ebola virus disease exposed the weaknesses of our healthcare delivery system. Now, it is the coronavirus. Similarly, the impact of coronavirus on our country has been intensified by the spike of the Delta variant. Together, we can be stronger in fighting COVID-19 as we are doing now in the same way we defeated the Delhi Ebola virus disease. Let us, in particular, acknowledge and applaud the Liberian health sector, especially the incident management team and our frontline healthcare practitioners and partners for the continual efforts in combating COVID-19. It is important as we continue this fight for the achievement of ultimate victory over the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as the development of a vibrant healthcare system that we allow the health professionals to make health decisions. We should not relinquish healthcare decisions in this country to another entity or non-health professionals or practitioners at this will undermine the fight against COVID-19. Let us invest in improving our health facilities, developing our health professionals, practitioners, and compensate them adequately for their sacrificial services to the people of Liberia. This can only be achieved if we cooperate, collaborate, and coordinate our ability, skills, and expertise. Because together, we are stronger. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Liberians, I'm delighted to inform you that the University of Liberia College of Health Sciences recently received approval notice that U.S. 50 million USA grant, along with Yale and Vanderbilt universities, for the establishment of a research hub in Liberia and the enhancement of our health sector. The project will focus on applying research for a healthy Liberia, leading to a center for teaching, learning, and innovation in the Republic of Liberia. Education, your excellencies, honorable members of the legislature, and fellow compatriots, having charted the course of our conflict rating history, highlighted the struggle to endure many calamities and survive as a nation for 174 years, and elaborated on the sad reality of where we are versus where we ought to be given our history, sides, 
and natural resources endowment, there emerges a portrait of missed opportunities. But we should not despair, as there is still a big way to ride ourselves to redemption and become the oasis of development we know we should. That big wave is education. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, as we use this occasion to convey a pivotal message of strength through unity and rally national support for the attainment of sustainable development and prosperity for all Liberians, let us realize that education is the fulcrum. Education is the sole cross-cutting factor that can enable us to achieve all of our bold and lofty development aspiration in the medium to long term, giving power to the people, improving the economy and increasing jobs, maintaining the peace that was earned with sweat and blood, or improving governance and transparency cannot be substantially achieved without the eagling support of an informed and competitively educated citizenry. The corrosive inspection of the history of development in the global south will single out education as the common denominator. In Southeast Asia, the developmental miracle of the 80s and 90s cannot be divorced from post-World War II policy that deliberately focused on human capacity enhancement to match capital expenditure. The island of Cuba has the best doctor per capita ratio in the Western Hemisphere and one of the best healthcare system in the world. Nearly all of their health practitioners and professionals are products of their educational system. Today, the rise of the two neoliberal development shining stars of Africa Botswana and Rwanda are often credited to abundant natural resource endowment and tourism, respectively. But partnering these two economics is the characteristically sound and educated citizen base. We will be remiss not to at least hint our awareness that the educational sector in Liberia, as critical as it is to the success of our development dreams, has been the subject of national conversation for the world, but also a victim of market failures and reform implementation misalignment. There is a failure at the rate which we increase the size of our lantern labor keeps exceeding and the absorption capacity of our economy mainly due to mismatches between the demand of the 21st century economy below full potential and the relics of our outdated school system. We certainly have a problem in this sector when there continues to exist an ever widening schism between reform and implementation. For elected public officials, genuine commitment to invest in education is a catch-22. It is necessary a long-term pivot for development but investment therein takes at least a generation to yield results. There is a need to continuously increase investment, even though we do not see immediate results because of the human capacity development cycle. It takes time. It requires conviction, vision, courage, anticipation, and leadership to demonstrate commitment to educational reform. That is why, Mr. President, we want to commend your leadership in supporting tertiary education reforms efforts at the University of Liberia and other public tertiary institutions. Recommendation. As we bring this 174 national oration to a close, Mr. President and our fellow compatriots, our friends and partners, kindly permit us to proffer the following recommendation for your kind consideration. One, that the government of Liberia invest more into the health sector, that our people across the length and breadth of the country may have access to quality and affordable healthcare delivery. Community-based healthcare training will be a significant contribution for our people through our health workers and professionals. 
leading a healthy people is not only a fellow in your cap, Mr. President, but will contribute to the benefit of all Liberians. Two, while we acknowledge and appreciate very highly the current tremendous effort of the government to improve the educational sector, there is a dying need to increase the budgetary support to the educational sector, including early childhood, primary, secondary, technical, vocational, and tertiary institution across Liberia. Investment in education will enhance our fight against the COVID-19 and contribute to the attainment of the goals and targets of the proper agenda for prosperity and development, as well as those of the sustainable development goals, thus ensuring a prosperous nation. Mr. President, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, special attention must also be given to our Adorex youth. A government-funded nationwide program should be formulated to transform these youth into valuable citizens and contributors to our society. They should be trained and subsequently organized into agricultural brigades and given the basic inputs and implements to competitively produce crops, vegetable, rice, meat, and fish, among others. Thirdly, that this government prioritize the empowerment of these citizens to grow what they eat and eat what they grow. We must prioritize agriculture because it holds the greatest potential for alleviating poverty and inequality and ensuring food security and economic stability. Our plea, therefore, is for the government to prioritize once again the counties of Bonn, Lofa, Nimba as the nation's food basket and invest heavily in this sector, which will result in the saving of millions of dollars being spent importing our stable food rice as we did in pre-war Liberia. By doing this, we will improve food security, reduce food imports, increase export, and hence spark an economic transformation that creates jobs and boosts the incomes of ordinary citizens. And four, that the national government prioritize investment in the full operationalization of the Liberia Research and Education Network, LREN. This is because science, technology, and innovation are key drivers of sustainable development. The Airline is a specialized internet service provider that interconnects research and educational institutions within Liberia with others across the globe. It is expected to connect to other regional and international research and educational networks. It distinguishes itself by providing a very high-speed network, both at the core and access level with the possibility of offering dedicated channels at an affordable rate for individual research projects for our students, our faculty, and staff. When operationalized, this project will impact research institutions, educational institutions, in addition to the medical institutions, our clinics, and our hospital. His Excellency, Dr. George Opon, Fauke Klong Jale, Bekube Tape, Manawia, President of the Republic of Liberia, distinguished Liberians, ladies and gentlemen, as our nation charts a way forward in our endeavor to achieving development, peace, human rights, justice, health, and prosperity for all, let us conclude with the following points. One, God, our creator, should be the reason for peace unity, conflict transformation, dialogue, tolerance, reconciliation, and sustainable development. Our common heritage can be a reason. Our faith in God can be the rationale. Our nationality can be a premise. Our struggles against injustice, violence, poverty, disease, suffering, abuse, and death can be a common ground for peace. Our shared values, ethics, virtues, or moral essence can be a rallying point for our coming together as Liberians to work for reconciliation, peace.
peace and unity. Secondly, peace is God's will for all people. Peace is universal. Liberia needs peace for sustainable growth and development from Cape Mount to Cape Palmas, River Sands to River G, Bafalu to Grand Cru, Maryland to Mossorado, Manima to Mangibi. Therefore, we need to work together for God's perfect peace, dialogue, unity, reconciliation, and sustainable development in Liberia. As a child of God, we are required to be righteous and exhibit righteousness in all we do and at all times. This means simply, let us endeavor to do the right thing that benefits all our people and glorifies God. We, are never, we will never forget a Chinese proverb which says, quote, if there is righteousness in the heart, there will be beauty in the character. If there is beauty in the character, there will be harmony in the home. If there is harmony in the home, there will be order in the nation. And if there is order in the nation, there will be peace in the world, unquote. As we say in our Liberia balance, no condition is permanent. We are of the strongest conviction that though Liberia may be called a developing country after 174 years, though Liberia may be faced with the challenge of divisiveness and developmental struggles with our renewed commitment to foster togetherness, unity, and hard work, our current condition will definitely change and will rub shoulders with our fellow compatriots and other nations as we keep the spirit of nationalism, patriotism growing from strength to strength. May God grant us the wisdom to know right from wrong, the knowledge to change those things. We cannot accept the courage to accept those things. We cannot change and the serenity to know the difference as we rebuild this sweet land of liberty that shall forever be ours together. We are stronger in union strong. Success is sure. We shall over all prevail. Long live the Republic of Liberia. Long live the President of the Republic and his family. Long live government officials of the Republic. Long live other leaders of the Republic. Long live the partners and friends of the Republic. Long live the resilient people of the Republic of Liberia. Happy July 26, happy 174th anniversary, and happy Independence Day. Thank you all very much, and God's richest blessing be with you always. Amen. We'll now read the list of messages of felicitation received from sovereign heads of state of government. His Excellency Joko Widodo, President of the Republic of Indonesia. His Excellency General Paryu China Cha, retired Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Thailand. His Excellency Lazarus Makate Shikwara, President of the Republic of Malawi. His Royal Highness Carl Gustav, the King of Sweden, Royal Palace of Stockholm. Honorable Joseph R. Biden Jr., President of the United States of America. His Excellency Julius Mada Bayou, President of the Republic of Sierra Leone. His Holiness Pope Francis, Head of the Vatican. His Majesty King Mohammed VI, the King of Morocco. His Excellency Mohammed Yunus Al Manfi, President of the Libyan Presidential Council. His Excellency Abdel. Fatayal Sisi, President of the Arab Republic of Egypt. His Excellency, Mr. Xi Jinping, President of the People's Republic of China. His Excellency, Moon Jae-in, President of Korea. His Excellency, General Michel Aoun, President of the Republic of Lebanon. His Excellency, Mr. Frank Walter Stenmeyer, President of the Federal Republic of Germany. His Majesty Philip VI, 
King of the Kingdom of Spain, His Excellency Mr. Guy Parmelin, President of the Swiss Confederation, His Excellency Mr. Miguel Canel, President of the Republic of Cuba, His Excellency Mr. Emmanuel Macron, President of the French Republic, His Excellency Nana Ado Dankwa Akufo Ado, President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Mr. Sergio Mattarella, President of the Republic of Italy, His Excellency Mr. Denis Sasu Ngozu, President of the Republic of Congo, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, King of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, His Excellency Mr. Vladimir Putin, President of the Russian Federation, and His Excellency Haig G. Gaengo, President of the Republic of Namibia. We now will read messages of felicitation from foreign missions of government and organizations. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of Rwanda, the Embassy of the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria in Conakry, Embassy of the State of Qatar, Mano River Union, the Crown Prince of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the Embassy of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Right Honorable Dr. Sidi Mohamed Tunis, Speaker of the ECOWAS Parliament. This brings us to the end of our congratulatory messages received. Thank you. Fellow citizens, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted and pleased to introduce His Excellency, Dr. George Manewia, President of the Republic of Liberia and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Liberia to deliver his Independence Day remarks to the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency, Dr. George Mane Weir, President of the Republic of Liberia. Your oh, Excellency, Madam uh, Marie Deconti Weir, First Lady of the Republic of Liberia, Madam Vice President, Mr. Speaker, and honorable members of the House of Representatives, Mr. Pro Temporary, and members of the Senate, Mr. Chief Justice, Associate Justices, and members of the judiciary, the dean and members of the cabinet, officials of government, joint and members of the diplomatic corps, our special guests, bishops, prelates, and members of the clergy, chiefs and traditional leaders, our development partners, superintendents, and local government officials, political and business leaders, marketers, students, members of the fourth estate, my fellow citizens, ladies and gentlemen. On July 26, 1847, the founding fathers of the nation announced to the world the birth of a new country to be called Liberia and declare its independence from the rule of any power to stand on its own among the community of nations. Since that momentous day, the declarations of independence have been commemorated as an important national milestone in the history of our country. Today, through the grace and blessings of the Almighty God, we are proud to celebrate 
the 174th anniversary of Liberia's founding as the first and the oldest African Republic. On behalf of the government of Liberia, and in my own name, along with my darling wife, Madam Claire Marie Decontiwea, I would like to congratulate all Liberians, both at home and abroad, on this auspicious occasion, and to wish you a joyous Independence Day celebration. Even as we, as a nation, and as a people, struggle with the negative impact of the global coronavirus pandemic. Fellow citizens, ladies and gentlemen, as we are all aware, since early last year, the entire world has been ravaged by this deadly disease which has infected almost 200 million persons so far and resulted in the deaths of more than 4 million citizens of our various countries. Liberia was not being spared. The scourge of this pestilence, and we have also suffer our share of infections and deaths. However, through strong leadership and effective implementation of health policies and protocols, as well as the sacrifices and dedication of our health workers, these have been kept to a minimum. Last month, the country experienced an aggressive upsurge of the COVID-19 pandemic as opposed to the situation since early this year and last year. Over a period of three weeks, the daily number of people testing positive for coronavirus increased from less than 10 to almost 100 per day. And the proportion of people testing positive was as high as 20% over the same period. In the same month, new COVID-19 infections expanded to 14 of the 15 counties. There were also high hospitalization at the star base COVID-19 treatment center with nearly all beds occupied. I am informed by the Minister of Health that as of July 24th, 2021, Liberia has recorded a cumulative number of 5,433 confirmed cases after 100 for the 1,077 tests. Nearly 38.5% or 2,094 of these cases were reported last month. The Minister of further reports that there have been 226 deaths since the onset of the pandemic in Liberia, with 140 of those deaths occurring since the recent upsurge of the disease. The number of people vaccinated to date is 95,867, of which it is 6,288 persons have received the first dose of AstraZeneca vaccines. And 9,579 have been fully vaccinated. Despite the above figures, I am pleased to the country has seen a significant
Genesis since the beginning of July. And for the past week, the number of confirmed cases has been less than 10. I ask that you now please join me to observe a moment of silence in memory of all our citizens and residents who have lost their lives as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed rest in perfect peace and may light perpetual shine upon them. Fellow citizens, ladies and gentlemen, my government will continue to strengthen the strategic interventions that will urgently interrupt and then chain of COVID-19 infections. As your president, I am determined to continue to exert my best efforts to ensure that we halt the further spread of coronavirus in Liberia. In this regard, I have asked the national legislature to allocate an additional two million United States dollars of our own resources to enable us to obtain critical supply for our treatment centers and to assist in general case management and infections control. Additionally, an amount of eight million United States dollars was recently approved for Liberia by our development partners to help finance the acquisitions of much needed vaccines and supply. I am encouraged to see that many more Liberians are now heeding our advice to wear masks, wash their hands often, and observe social distancing. If we are to be successful in the battle, we will need the collective effort, the cooperation of all citizens, residents alike, to strictly adhere to the published health protocols. My fellow citizens, ladies and gentlemen, the theme of this year's celebration is Together, we are stronger, fighting COVID-19 and achieving development, peace, human rights, justice, health, and prosperity for all. This team reflects our unique values and collective experience as a resilient people who have prevailed through many adversities. I must now take this opportunity to express my sincere appreciation to the National Orator of the Day, Reverend Professor Dr. Julius Jolokon Saoulu Nelson Jr., President of the University of Liberia, for the magnificent way he as founded on this team during his excellent oration. Being a renowned academic scholar that he is, it came as no surprise to me that the content of his eloquently delivered speech was carefully researched and historically instructive. We will all do well, to learn the important lessons and adapt the practical solutions that have been prescribed by the learned professor to guide us in our collective behavior and attitudes. As we together seek to become stronger in fighting 
the deadly corona virus while at the same time striving to achieve development peace human right justice health and prosperity for all i thank you professor nelson for a job well done my fellow citizens ladies and gentlemen just before the third wave of the COVID-19 virus began in our country. I embarked on a nationwide tour, the 15 political subdivisions of Liberia. Although this visit long delayed by the onset of the first wave of coronavirus was intended to thank Liberians for our historic 2017 election victory. It also afforded me the opportunity to observe the development challenges that we face as a country from the closer and more personal perspective. One of the recurring themes which remain prominent and consistent throughout my journey was the large infrastructure deficit Liberia cannot boast of being the first independent African nation. When up to today, we lack the proper health, educational, governance, and infrastructure systems befitting such status. That is why, since our incumbency, my administration has endeavored to tackle roads and other basis infrastructure requirements so as to bring improvement to the lives of our people, as well as ensuring that there is adequate access to services. In spite of many challenges, we have rehabilitated thousand of kilometer roads and new ones were built. Built hundreds of housing units, constructed and rehabilitated many schools, hospitals, and several market buildings. We will continue our infrastructure drive in keeping with the proper agenda until we can begin to reduce the infrastructure deficit because the very existence of this deficit at this time in our national development trajectory can be regarded as a major historical failure. In spite of the negative impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have ensured that the national development agenda is not derailed. With the firm and prudent fiscal and monetary policy measures we have instituted. Inflation has returned to single digit. There is also greater stability in the monetary sector. And marginal GDP growth is projected. My fellow citizens, ladies and gentlemen, sustainable development can only be achieved if there is sustainable peace. That is why we must all work collectively to maintain the peace we now enjoy. No matter how polarizing our democratic discourse may become, never again should we resort to violence to resolve our differences. We are all one people, irrespective of our political, ethnic, and religious Persuasion, let me call on those religious leaders who are using their platform to predict religious war, to instead use their influence to preach peace, prosperity, and development. Today, Liberia is a nation that is at peace with itself and with its neighbors. Let us all play our part to ensure that there will be no war again in our beloved country.
My government will therefore continue to create the conditions necessary for the rights of every Liberian to be fully respected regardless of political background and religion or ethnicity. Each and every one of us has a stake in the future of our beloved country. We should therefore play our part in ensuring that we do not engage in acts that could derail the hard-earned peace that we enjoy now. We have reached this far as a nation through the thoughts and tears of our forefathers. And that is why maintaining the peace remain the foundations of the proper agenda for prosperity and development. It is a responsibility for which we must all be here collectively accountable. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on this day, 174 years ago, our forefathers made the death for what was to become the new star on the African continent. The rich and seven filled with tales of trauma and tribulation. But just for the many trials we have faced throughout the course of our history, we have remained resilient, realizing that this nation is our common patrimony. My fellow citizens, our unity in diversity and our resilience as a nation has set the foundation for us to deliver peace and prosperity for generations yet unborn. So let us be encouraged and inspired by the immortal words of our beloved national anthem which are now coach. A union strong success is sure. We cannot fail. With God above our rights to prove, we will over all prevail. Long live Liberia, happy land, the home of glorious liberty. By God's command. Once again, let me use this occasion to wish a happy Independence Day to all citizens at home and abroad. May God bless us all and our beloved Mama Liberia. I thank you. Will I invite Imam Mohammed M. Kane for the benediction? In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. All praise is due Allah, the creator and sustainer of the words. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the most beneficent, the most merciful, Maliki Yawm deen the king and the master of the day of judgment. Iyaka na'abudu, it is thee alone that we worship, wa iyaka nasta'in, and thee alone that we ask for help. Ihdina surat al-mustaqim, guide us on the straight path. Surat al-ladhina na'am ta'alihim, the path of those who you have bestowed your favor upon. And not the path of those who earn your anger, nor those who went astray. Amen. Amen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We'll have the playing of the Liberia National Anthem. <laughs>
the 174th Independence Day pre-recorded program at on ELBC Radio, our substations, and also relays on other radio stations in Morovia. Liberians, let us celebrate. <laughs> You shall sure once again become the light. You shall sure once again become the light of Africa. You shall sure once again become the light. You shall sure once again become the light of Africa. You shall sure eat the fruit of your land, the fruit of your land, the fruit of your land. Hey, you shall sure eat the fruit of your land, the fruit of your land. Eight minutes up to 1 p.m. here in Liberia. This is Spoon 107.5 FM. We're also live on our Facebook TV page, Spoon TV Live. So you just listened to the airing of the Independence Day program on ELBC, as was relayed on Spoon FM, Super FM, and Fabric FM as well. Uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the government uh, decided that there wouldn't be a program where people would have attended rather the entire independence day program was pre-recorded and aired we listen to the president delivering his independence day message as well as the 174th independence day orator a reverend dr julius sawulu nelson a junior president of the university of liberia he distressed a lot of points as well as president we are reaffirming his government commitment uh, to working with each and every Liberian as well as uh, against the fight against coronavirus here in the country. Uh, well, we'll digest this speech later on, but Joseph Soko Kone is also out. Two. Us. Let's bring check him one, two, check one, two, uh, check. In an hour from there now, the the will be the check. the Somalia Drive Road, which will be really yeah, yeah, the first of all. One, two, one, let's two. bring on check. Joseph Soko Junior, who's live from just there on the okay. Somalia Drive. So, okay. the Japan okay. freeway. Joseph, yeah, 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 you loud and clear, yes, sir. Okay. First of all, one, two. So, like you like okay. said, we yes, hear uh, somewhere around the Semeco community, not too far from the Freeport of uh, Onyove as well, where preparations are being made. This is where the official reading cutting will be here. The president will be here like 45 minutes from now. That's according to the protocol to come and, you know, do the official dedication of this road project. Uh, but again, remember now the health protocol has been highly, One, highly observed. Uh, even journalists, they're asking that one of the few journalists should come over here today. That's the bowl, you know, that covers the entire information for the role. Uh, but, you know, the place in the club only while waiting the president. Okay, so now I do I do know that this particular stretch of the road is a very busy one, but you don't see vehicles by traffic diverted. No, no, no. no, definitely. Uh, you know, the one I'm showing you now is the one going down uh, the railway, if you may. So around the door community, they redirected the traffic. Those who come in to pass the free boat. You are asked now to use the dual community route, and those that are going to Dwala and the rest of it, they ask to use the uh, the other part of the road uh, right after you cross the bridge. Uh, that's the route they're using. Hello, hello, and hello. those who go and Dwala, they still have the opportunity if you're coming from town, you can use the main stretch of the road, I mean, to pass through. But this half of the road has been blocked for I think three hours. That's why they say it's going to last. Week. 
the press mm. okay? No, with, with the traffic being rerouted all the time, okay. later, Joseph, no uh, there is a level of traffic congestion you your camera, uh, at these points where vehicles are being told this to take an alternative route. Traffic. Though it's the holiday, uh, but are you getting frustrations from citizens, or rather everybody is saying, okay, this is what we need to do in order mm. to let this program get on, on its way? Definitely, I think pedestrians, even some are, were stopped mm -hmm. from not using a route. When the uh, police director came and said, No, our pedestrians can use the route, but they were shooting, you know, they're shooting a group up together, you know, while observing the, uh, the COVID 19 protocol. So, you know, everybody kind of like, Oh, making up the game of fire, we can use our road, man, or that's the future road, uh, future now, so that we can, we can, you know, start using our road. You know, in fact, there uh, was a member for the driver union that earlier on they were here, they thought they were part of the program, but I think uh, someone from the team, you know, I mean, informed them that no, this program is not going to last longer, and so, you know, they left as well. Mm, I can see the Japanese flag there um, soaring high and waving as the wind is blowing by. Uh, Japan is uh, the key, key project sponsor. Um, this entire Somalia drive that will be renamed the Japan Freeway, according to government records, cost at least 95 million United States dollars. The first phase, which was dedicated by the president in May of 2018, cost 50 million United States dollars. And this second phase, um, the approximated cost is 45 million United States dollars. When you look at this new freeway um, that is going to bring an end to the traffic congestion or better still bring a solution to the traffic congestion okay. along the Gartnersville stretch of the road. Uh, what do you see when you look at this piece of engineering, Joseph? Well, uh, that one is great. Uh, you know, yesterday or a day before, the okay. okay. some two. other members, right. we had an official tour this, we officially toured this road and I'll tell you, people are actually excited about it. But then, you said, you know, the tra traffic congestion. There are other people who have different view on that. So that's why it's new. There are still people who, you know, parking old trucks right by the road. There are people who come in right closer to the road selling around the Gatlinsville Junction. They're in the middle of the road. There are people selling there. And with that, it's still not going to help. People will stop. Uh, in the middle of the street to put a uh, passenger down. Uh, with that, there are people who think that it will not help at all, you know. So the stop signs should be there teaching drivers and motorcyclists as to how, you know, those sounds are on the road, the stop sound, the go sign, different, different sounds. There should be a workshop, a public workshop. So, you know, teaches drivers and the cyclists, including the, um, the, the, the KK riders as them as we call them, so that they will know exactly how to use the road. Other than that, we're still gonna face in the the uh, uh the same normal traffic. But for okay. the work, I mean we, we know you know exactly we've been touring the road. You see the bridge there, the uh, double bridge. Uh, it's actually great if you see the engineering work down there. I'm not an engineer, but I mean it looks better than the way it used to be. So I'm sure it would bring some relief. It's, I mean, even though it's putting in this. Another thing okay. people talk this about. Yeah, yeah you live, Joseph. Go ahead. Okay, please. and, yeah, and another thing people were talking about, this, Amo, is, uh, is uh, the uh, maintenance of the road. Thank you very much. In the drainages I along the road, Amo, people like yeah. girls who take dirt from the Algerian community, they kind of put the dirt in the hole. Amo, to block, you know, the drainage. So, People are saying, I mean, if they will have a tour booth that they will generate money and have consistent, you know, cleaning up process on the road. You know, talking about the Russian lies, I mean, that could be one of the ways. But if it is just left alone, it will be like the normal road around here, like the way everyday government passing the uh, uh, the free pool road, you know. That's what some, some are suggesting. Okay. Um, valid suggestions there. Those are problems that we will inherit. The people and the government of Japan are giving us this gift on our independence day, our 174th independence day celebration. 
moments from now, the president will be cutting that ribbon along with the Japanese ambassador um, to say, look, now you have it, the reconstructed, um, remodeled Japan freeway. The name is going to be a difficult thing for most Liberians because people grew up knowing this road as Somalia Drive. And after the dedication, when it's now renamed the Japan freeway, it's going to take a lot of years uh, for people to get used to that particular name. Thank you so much. I know we'll be live once the official ceremony kickstart there, but that is the Independence Day gift that we'll be receiving from the people of Japan um, onto the people of Liberia. Joseph, any other thing you want to say? Wait, 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 wait. Are the traffic lights on? Because mind you, there are traffic Thank lights on along the road. Are they front that front 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 so there are two front things we're waiting to see one that one. That's one of it, the one traffic light. Uh, two one is the one lights one are off. One so one at this one moment, one I cannot one say one uh, the traffic one light one is on or not at this one moment. These are local contractors that we're working. At this moment, I cannot say the traffic light is on or not. We're hoping that it comes on when the road is officially I mean, when the road is officially, you know, dedicated, well, as it is now, so there's no traffic uh, lights on for now. And okay. another one with the with the name is, uh, so somebody was asking, well, we have, is it how like you're going to be like everything, and everybody would do something to us, and you know, with the, who put that name on it. So today, if uh, Guinea one, says, okay, Liberia, I'm one, one, I mean, I want to help one, to pass the road from Jalata, you know, to Nine Street. So we are sitting in the highway, you know, but that's a point where journalists get together, you know, to have a, you know, lecture, and that's what we we're talking about. But I want to thank you. Uh, again, we will bring you live coverage of uh, happenings here. Uh, there you see far in the camera uh, suggestions, you know, people who come in up, probably the work from the president is delicate, but still the protocol officer and uh, the police as well, still asking them to, the uh, you know, Thank you very much. to stay away, not to, to observe the social people. distancing. But it seems it's a bit okay? difficult. We really it's hoping that it works, but it seems difficult. The time is good. Okay, Joseph, we have to leave you right there. That's another tricky one. Definitely. You can um, you get the use of Liberians on the renaming of the road. Mind you, if somebody gives you a gift, especially a expensive gift, that costs 95 million United States dollars to give you a full lean road that is supposed to have modern safety measures and everything. You wouldn't mind um, giving the name of that particular project to the people who, ben who give you the money to carry it out. Common case in point, people name their children after benefactors, people who they benefit from. Thank you so much and happy Independence Day to you, Joseph Sokokone and the rest of the guys there doing a magnificent job for us here. Thank you. All right, folks, um, that's where we leave it. Um, happy birthday to you, um, Desire Cheer. Today is also your birthday. You can take it from your mom and your dad. You celebrate along with Liberia. Um, today makes you three years old. We wish you all of the best. You can have a wonderful, wonderful birthday celebration. And may you grow into a beautiful, beautiful woman. And not just being beautiful, but also a woman of stature and statute as well you can take this from your mom madam alice and mj as well and then the rest of your family so folks remember the health protocols are still in full swing to any other further pronouncement so if you're going out there to enjoy yourself the government has not locked down or closed the country you can go out there following all of the health protocols and have for yourself a great july 26 celebration well in liberia we say because of bad dream you wouldn't sleep well people been going out there to do their best within their means to have for themselves and their families a great celebration. My name is Diamond Slanger on behalf of the entire crew. Um, this is where we leave it. Have for yourselves a wonderful celebration. Once that dedication ceremony gets underway, we'll go live from the location. On behalf of the entire Spoon group of companies, we'd love to wish you a wonderful and a happy July 26 celebration. Bye-bye. Every
Oh, my God. 